everyone, I'm Yolanda Soto Lopez from the Opcast channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video tutorial. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so, that way you never miss a new video. If you see anything you like, be sure to hit that like button, put any comments below, and let's get the party started! Hello everyone, so today's video tutorial I'm going to show you how to knit this really easy, um, I know it doesn't look easy, it looks kind of um, fancy, but it's a pretty basic um, washcloth. This is not my pattern. I actually found, um, was on the internet surfing the internet for knitting, different knitting projects I could do for easy housewarming gifts or hostess gifts. I found this uh, blog post and it's on simplynotable.com. I believe it was Carrie or Carly that did this. Um, it's a blog with a uh, mother and several of her daughters that post different um, knitting and different projects, different uh, crafting ideas. Um, so this is going to, this is another one that I already did. It works out pretty fa fast. This one I, I have it ready to start, um, to start getting it ready to uh, bind off and then I'll show you how to do that once I show you what the pattern repeat is. It's really easy. It's a 10 row repeat and the pattern is super forgiving so this so let's go ahead and get started for this you're going to be using a worsted weight cotton yarn um it, you could use whatever brand you want this i just used a sugar and cream because i had a lot of these that i bought for like um 50 cents for each one of these little um, bundles at michael's when they were on sale a while back i didn't know what i was going to use them for but um that's going to work and this one um has um i think it's like 70 yards Yes, um, this one has 120 yards and you need about 50 yards for the washcloth so you can make um, a couple of washcloths or you could do the washcloth. She also has a link for a mini little washcloth that's perfect for like washing, like to do your makeup removal or different things and it would make a perfect little hostess gift. So I will put the um, link for their website and then you could go see the written pattern. Uh, I'm not going to write it. Uh, here so that you can go there and since it is their um, pattern they also have the mini lost she calls it the almost lost washcloth so if you go to the blog you can find it simply notable.com and the washcloth is called uh, almost lost washcloth and then she has a little mini one that was done by Sandy Tealman I think Timeman or something like that so we'll go ahead and get started with that so here we're going to begin and then I'll show you how we get that going Okay, so for here, I'm just using my uh, cotton yarn. I'm going to start by the roll. The instructions tell us to cast on 14 stitches. You could. I'm going to be using a long tail cast on. So I just make a loop and leave enough yarn um, so that I can have a tail. Actually, I'm going to leave it a little bit longer because I'm going to use this tail to cinch up my work at the end, the middle section. If you don't like um, casting on with the long tail, I have a video on how to cast on using a crochet hook and I will link that on the bottom here in the video description box as well. So here I'm going to go ahead and cast on 14. Remember when we're knitting, if you're a beginning knitter, knitter that this loop on the yarn counts as a stitch. So here I'm going to go ahead and cast on 14. So that's one, two, and I will just go ahead and do my 14 stitches. Okay, so I have my 14 stitches on. Now on the pattern, she does say to use a size uh, eight US needle. I'm using a size uh, nine because um, I don't wanna use a straight, a, straight needles because they were uh, the ones that I had were pretty long so I'm just using these uh, double pointed needles um, they're the seven inches um, so that's plenty uh, of length to get all your stitching on there and work in mom without them falling off you could even go to a six millimeter I did the wash the mini washcloths on that and it worked out pretty well and then of course I love these needles from Clover but you can use whichever kind you want um, so here once you have your 14 stitches. The pattern is super easy. Um, and she's written it, the first post had it kind of in a shorthand version and then she rewrote the post to have it um, 
a different way that it's probably more easier for people to understand. So here, for all of our odd rows, you're going to be knitting across. The only stitches we need are to knit the knit stitch, a yarn over, and then the bind off. So this should be a pretty good pr uh, practice for beginning knitter knitters to learn your knitting stitch, your yarn yarn over, and then the bind off. So here, the odd rows are always knit. So here I am a continental knitter, which means that I hold the yarn in my left hand. This seems to be easier for crocheters to learn how to knit this way because you're already used to tensioning the yarn in your left hand. Uh, for English knitters, then you would hold the yarn and tension uh, the yarn in your right hand. So here I'm going to be showing you the way I learned. And so here I'm just going to go ahead and wrap the yarn. This is how I hold my yarn. People hold their yarn different ways. If you're doing with a uh, English style, usually people will wrap the yarn around their little finger and then come up something like this. I uh, am super slow in the English style. I believe that Continental gets faster once you learn how to do it. Um, you want to work as close to the edge tips of your needles as you can. The When you're knitting, whether it's Continental or English, the yarn will be coming from behind the work. So here I'm going to go ahead and show you how that would work. So here we're going to knit the knit stitch. So here you're going to get your needle, your empty needle. You're going to insert the needle from the left to the right. So here is that little stitch there. You're going to go left to right and there. Can you see how that looks there? So with the Continental then you, I just, I love this style. I just grab the yarn. Basically you're just picking it up and you're going to pull it through there, see that? And then you just slip it off. After I slip my first stitch off, I like to kind of adjust it, kind of a little tension there. And you're going to knit all the way across, just like that. Okay, so this is how I do my style is continental, just like that. And I think it gets faster once you start doing it. And um, once you start learning how to do it, if you're going to do your uh, English style, it's totally up to you what you do. The English style, I will show it for you, to you, but I'm not good at it. Yarn, wrap the yarn over and then bring it up. So your yarn would still be coming from the back. See that? You're going to still go from the left to right. You wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it out just like that. Go into your yarn left, wrap the needle and pull it out. There's some people that don't wrap the needle this way. They'll just actually just hold the yarn, wrap it this way. So I think that kind of makes it slower because then you're going to have to wrap it, bring it around, you know, wrap it, you know, when you put it in there and bring it around. So I never learned that style. So I guess it's whatever you learn first, right? So here I'm just going to do my style knitting all the way around. And see, since you're not having to wrap anything, I think it gets faster. So all your odd rows are going to be knitted. Now, for your even rows, um, we're going to be the first four stitches. At, at, at the pattern is going to be the same. And then you're going to start uh, leaving stitches on your needle. So here for the row two, which is our first even row all your even rows you're going to knit the first four you're going to do a yarn over and then you're going to start leaving different amounts of stitches on the needle and turning your work which is a short row technique so here the first row you're going to leave two and this is um i kind of thought of the way it reminded me kind of like the cheer remember two four six eight who do we appreciate so here i i know it's kind of silly but i always try to find different ways to think of it so here the first uh, uh the first even row you're going to leave two unworked the next even row you're going to leave four unworked then the next one is six then eight and every uh odd row is going to be knit so here let me show you how that would look so here we're going to knit the first four stitches and this will be the same on all of our even rows. So here's one, just kind of adjust that there, I'm trying to grab. So here's one, two, three, and four. Now when you come here to the fourth, this is the same on every even, uh, even 
a row. So there's one, two, three, four, and now we're gonna yarn over, which means that I'm gonna wrap that yarn over my needle like that, okay? Over the front. And this will create a little hole in our work, which is what we want. It's gonna be part of that design. Yarn overs are worked a lot for lace work. So here, once I yarn over, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knit into my next eight stitches. One, two, three, and eight. And then every time you do this, you're you're knitting one less stitch. So here, after you do your four stitches and your yarn over, then the next even row would be knit seven, then the next knit six, then knit five, and then you're gonna be leaving more rows here, more stitches on your needles unworked. So here, for a row two, it tells us to knit our four, and then, um, and then yarn over, and then we're gonna knit our eight, and we're gonna leave these two stitches unworked we're going to leave them on the needles now we're going to turn the work and this is a what is known as short rowing usually when you short row you need to wrap your yarn to keep the hole from create creating a hole just like kind of like your yarn over this pattern tells us not to do that because it's that little hole those little tiny holes are kind of part of the pattern so okay if you're knitting english style then this is how you would do the yarn over you would bring the yarn to the front like that Go ahead and go back into your next, you're gonna knit the next stitch, then you're gonna wrap, and then bring it out like that, and that will create the yarn over for you. So it's a little bit different than with the Continental. Let me take that off again, and then I'll show you one more time. So, here, you would be holding the yarn in your right hand. You would bring the yarn to the front, Go into the next stitch, wrap the yarn around, and then bring it back up. And then you would drop that off. Then you can go ahead and continue uh, knitting your next stitches. As you can see, I'm not really that good at that. Here, leaving those two stitches on your needle, you're going to turn your work over. And make sure you bring your, your yarn to the back. And this is once again an um, odd row, so we're gonna yarn. You're gonna knit all the way across, leaving those unworked. You're gonna start knitting it all the way to the end, and this is will create a little short row, meaning we're only adding stitches to part of the row, not the entire row. So it'll create um, on. You're not doing just a square. It's gonna create a shape. I hope I'm not over explaining things but if this is a beginner pattern if you already know how to do this here it's not going to be a problem so here when you come here you're going to see this loop and it looks kind of weird because it's not a regular stitch that's the yarn over that's the back part of the yarn over you're still going to knit in there like if it was a regular stitch because it is you're going to put your needle through there just left to right grab your yarn and pull it through okay and every time you're, you're knitting that one, you're increasing your stitch count, okay? So now here, instead of, in this row, instead of having 14 stitches is what we have when we cast on, now we've increased one more stitch. And you wanna, you're gonna be increasing every other row until we end up with 18 stitches on our needle. And that is correct. So don't freak out if your stitches increase are increasing. It's supposed to do that. So then once I do that row, then I'm going to turn my work again. I'm back on my odd row here. And so now here, if you start getting lost and you're not sure how many stitches have you left on work, if you look at our stitches, you can see that they're all here. They're right next to each other. And here, they're kind of apart. If you look at that, see how there's that gap right there? And then these are all together. That's going to tell you right there, oh, those were the two stitches that I, that's my short row right there. Um, usually when we wrap the work, it would be less noticeable, but here you could really see it. So these are the two stitches you left unworked. So now you know that you've done two unworked. Now you know that this row, we need to leave four unworked here. So then you're going to have the space here, then the space here, then when it's a six, and then eight. So here, remember our e even rows, um, 
our our always four knit yarn over and then we're going to stitch across knit across so here i'm going to go ahead and do my four knit stitches there's one two three and four i've knit four now i'm going to yarn over wrap that yarn in front of my work to create that little gap and now here instead of knitting eight i'm going to knit seven because i want to lift four of these unworked if you don't want to worry about how many do you knit just remember now i have to leave four unworked so here i'm going to knit my seven one four unworked so i'm going to have two here two here i'm going to turn my work around bring that yarn to the back and knit back. Now you're going to be able to see those little gaps here that will help guide you to let you know how many you've left work unworked. Now remember after you leave them unworked you turn your work over and you knit across back across until you get to the beginning and it's going to start giving you that um, shape that we need. There's that yarn over again knit through there Okay, and now you can see here that the short rowing is creating this almost like that little pointed area here because one side is bigger, one side is smaller because we're not adding height to this section of the needles of the work that we're leaving unworked. We're only adding it here. So now here, once again, turn around and now you got it. We've got to leave six unworked because here we have two we have four and see all of these are together so none of these have been left unworked two right there two four and now here we're going to leave six unworked so once again knit four one two three and four yarn over and now here we're going to want to leave um, six needles on the um, on our knitting needles here so we're going to go ahead and we're going to knit six one two three four five and six and you could check once again now that I have six stitches on my needle. Here's two, four, six. So there's the six one. And you'll be able to see the little gaps. Can you see those little gaps I'm talking about? That little hole there. And then these are all together. Now once I have my six, I'm going to turn my work over again. Put my yarn to the back. And then you are going to knit all the way to the back. Now we're increasing our stitches on our needles every time we do that the yarn overs are helping us increase our stitches and that's important because we're going to bind when we bind off we're going to bind off four stitches and then we'll still have at the end we'll have 14 stitches left there's that there's that yarn over and when we have those 14 stitches left that will be the name the stitches we need to begin our next little pointed section okay so here, we're almost coming to the end of our repeat. And see how it's creating those little holes? That's going to create part of that pattern. So turn my work around. And every time we're here, if you start getting lost, remember when you're on the edge with all your little holes, that's the edge when you're working from right to left, where there's the little holes, those are the areas that we're going to do our four, four knits, stitches, and then yarn over. And here you could see that the stitches have been left on the needle. There's two, there's four, you can see the knit space, and then six, oh, excuse me, two, four, and six. So now here I need to leave eight. So now I'm gonna knit my four. Um, one, two, three, and four. I'm going to yarn over 
and now here I'm just going to be knitting um, five. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to leave eight stitches on the needle. So here you could see two, two, four, six, eight. Now turn your work over, bring that yarn to the back of the needle and knit all the way across. And like I said, I knit continental stitch style, but you could knit um, your English style, but still of course be the same thing. So here, if you wanna do that, then if you do English, you would wrap it around and just continue that way. I'm not good at that. And you could see that I kind of struggle there, but you would just still do the same thing, wrap, go around, go there, wrap, that's the yarn over, wrap, um, and then continue all the way across. 